About a week ago, I finally finished Berserk, a story that took me about two years to read through and was one of the most unique and best experiences I've ever had while reading a manga or watching anime. Now this is not going to be your typical video about how Berserk saved my life and cured my mom's cancer and saved my brother's dog from crippling debt. There's definitely not going to be some super personal story in this video, but it is going to contain a lot of praise for Berserk, which was a story that I was pretty intimidated to start at first. I had heard so much overwhelmingly positive things about it and also heard that it was very different from shonen anime or manga which is what I typically consume. So I wasn't entirely sure if it was going to be a story for me and I was kind of nervous to start it. Even from the cover of the books themselves, I mean it's looking like I'm about to start some satanic ritual or something. Then I read the first page, the first page of Berserk and I was absolutely shocked. So shocked that I immediately had to tell my friend about it. This was the message I sent my friend about two years ago. Bro, legit the first page and the main character fucks a girl who turns into a monster mid-nut. What the fuck? And that was pretty much my experience with a lot of what happened in the first deluxe edition volume. Like, damn, that just happened? You just did that? And I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't really sure if this was gonna be a story for me. I mean, I've never really been a huge fan of gore and violence. Not that I dislike it, but I don't think it really adds anything. I had almost finished the volume and was thinking that this is probably not something that's for me. I mean, I basically thought this was gonna be the entire story. Just guts going around, kicking ass, killing and murdering in a gory fashion. Which, to be fair, does end up happening a lot, but at the end of this arc, something happened that made me decide to read the next volume as well. Now I don't know about you guys but when I read manga I like to listen to music, specifically the anime soundtrack that corresponds to the manga. Now I don't always know what songs will fit when so sometimes I'll have to grab my phone and quickly just like skip to a song that has a fitting tone to what I'm reading. Now you can kind of tell when an emotional page is coming while reading manga so a lot of times I'll wait for the song to reach the drop before turning the page kind of like this. And timing this will often be kind of difficult and kind of annoying, but it's awesome when it works perfectly. But with Berserk, I had no idea what to expect. Like, I basically had never heard anything about the story before other than it's really good. So I just kind of let the soundtrack play on its own. And when I got to the end of the arc, I got an incredibly satisfying page turn. This single moment was enough to make me interested in the future of the story. It made me intrigued to learn why Guts was the way he was and let me know that there was more to the story than what I initially thought. And the 1997 ending theme really helped elevate this moment for me. It gives me the feeling of a situation that's incredibly sad but that you can't do anything about. So you just have to live with it and exist in that sadness. Which I think is a pretty fitting feeling for Berserk's story. This song was an incredible bonus and asset to while reading the rest of the story, especially in the next arc, the Golden Age arc. Very early in this arc, I was completely invested and all my doubts I had from the previous arc completely disappeared. This is easily one of the best arcs I've ever experienced in any anime or manga. The quality of the writing here is just unmatched to the point where I actually got jealous while reading. Like I have no aspirations to be a writer and have never tried to write anything but I got jealous at the raw talent being displayed during this arc. Like man I wish I could be that good at anything. Just creating a character like Griffith is so impressive. There are so many parts of this arc that stayed on my mind for so long. Like this part where Griffith talks about what type of person he considers to be a friend. Guts and Koska looking at the campfire. There's just so much good stuff here. Genuine Genuinely not a single dull moment. The ending is absolute 10 out of 10 goodness. It's a moment that you could kind of tell was coming for a while, but nothing could prepare you for when it actually happens. It's so strange to me that a story this old is more refreshing and original than anything I've consumed in a really long time. And after finishing it, I went ahead and reread the Black Swordsman arc so that I got to read it in chronological order, and I gotta say I enjoyed it a lot more this time around. I actually understood why Guts did the things he did because I had the context and the quality just keeps going throughout the entire story. One thing I really liked was how many enjoyable side characters
characters it was able to introduce. Like characters that you think nothing of at first, but quickly start caring about. This random ass Roderick dude, turns out he's pretty chill. Even this dude I kind of started to like. And I think the reason for that is because there's so much attention to detail in regards to making the characters act in line with their personality. Like once you've been introduced to a character and seen who they are, they will always say and do things that fall in line with that personality, even with the most obscure and minor characters. And this just makes me interested to read whatever page I'm on because I know the characters will be fun to follow. Like even after all the band of the hawk dies, we just kind of get a new one, which I never thought would have been possible because of how attached that was to the previous group. It's obviously a completely different dynamic, but still a really interesting one. Some parts of the story I like more than others though, so we're gonna do a tier list because that's the only way I can talk about every arc in a structured way, starting with the Black Swordsman arc. Like I said, when I first read this arc, I thought it was just alright, like a B or even C tier. After rereading it though, it's easily an A tier. One thing I really like about this arc and the Lost Children arc is that Puck actually gets to do stuff in the story. Like in the story after this, it feels like he's there 100% for comedic relief. Whereas in this arc, it feels like he's there for a reason. So bonus points for that. And the Golden Age arc, man, every single detail about this arc is amazing. Guts's character development is great. The mystery surrounding Griffith works really well. Koska is such a good character. Judo is just an absolute goat. Like I think I could talk about this arc for hours if I really wanted to. So it's kind of difficult to only pick few specific things to talk about, so I'll just say it's one of my favorite story arcs ever. 10 out of 10, no notes. Lost Children is a really good arc as well, I think. I heard people don't like this arc or something, but I just don't get why. I mean, this panel in itself is so damn good. Jill was also such a dope character. I think it has a lot of good commentary on escapism, and honestly, it was just a really exciting part of the story to read through. Easily A tier. Now for the next arc, we got the Motherfuck motherfucking it. Conviction arc. This this arc absolutely slaps. And I think it slaps for three big reasons. The first one being the goal saving Casca. This is just a really easy goal to get behind and so it really feels like there's a sense of urgency throughout the entire arc as we keep seeing Casca get into more and more danger. And once we finally do save her, it's just an incredibly satisfying moment. The second reason is the antagonist, Moscas. Berserk doesn't really have that many like big complex villains that are present for large parts of the story, except for of course Griffith. So I think Moscas kind of makes this part stand out and he is just one hell of a villain. Like, every single scene he's in, he is completely unhinged. He will either say or do the most insane shit ever or just make a face that makes you absolutely terrified. He's also a significant threat towards the rest of the character and Guts. He helps make the arc progress further and further until we reach a point that is completely different from how the arc started. And the last reason is that this arc introduces so many new side characters. Like I said, Berserk is really good at making me care about new side characters, but up until this point, the only side character we really had was Puck. I mean, everyone else was dead or just chilling on a mountain. And Jill only appeared in her own arc, so all these new characters gave a fresh breath of air. Especially so because they're just so good. Farnese is an incredible character, Isidro gets more and more likable the more you read, all the girls in Jerome were good, Serpico also gives us something that is very unique to him, which is a character that is actually capable. So far, Guts had been the only real person capable of fighting since Casca and the Band of the Hawk, so having another character that can actually do something was really cool. I mean, he even goes toe to toe with Guts. This arc is just insane, and just like the Golden Age arc has an absolutely crazy ending. Easily S tier. Now the Millennium Falcon arc is an interesting one, because it doesn't really have as much of a clear structure like the other ones do, so it's kind of hard to remember what happens when in this arc, but I think seeing Guts get a new team and learn to rely on others is really cool. Farnese and Serpico were work really well in this arc, and I think it contains some of the best action in Berserk. It also contains some of the best art in Berserk, which I just realized I completely forgot to talk about. But uh, yeah, Berserk's art is so goddamn good. Easily the best art I've ever seen in the manga. 
even though I haven't read that many manga. And it really looks good in this arc specifically. There are so many panels that live rent free in my head that I remember exactly how it looked like. This arc is like either S or A for me, so we'll just leave it in A. And lastly, we have the Fantasia arc, which is unfinished, so I'm not gonna put it anywhere yet, but I will say that I really enjoyed it so far, and the pirate dude was hilarious, I can't lie. But again, since it is unfinished, it's kind of hard for me to talk about this arc, especially because it feels like there's so much more to this arc than what we have got. But I did kind of want to talk about the ending real quick. The last thing I read was the Lux Edition 14, which I believe is up to volume 41. Basically, I haven't read any of the chapters that weren't made by Miura because I'm waiting on the official release. But what I'm about to say might be completely addressed in the newer chapters, but who cares? For a very large part of the story, Guts's main motivation was to restore Casca to normal. This is a great motivation because Guts cares about Casca and I care about Casca. So obviously I'd want that to happen. But what I thought was a really interesting choice was how this goal actually happened. The chapters that take place within Casca's dream I thought were amazing and an incredibly cool way to show off how the current and old Casca feels. And when we finally get to the end of the dream, Casca is back. Guts' goal is fulfilled sort of. Casca is returned to normal, her personality and memory is back, and they can talk to each other, which is what Guts wanted. But she can't look at him. That's the only downside. So what's been a goal of a majority of the story ends up not being really an emotional impact. I mean, I could kind of tell something like this was going to happen. It was foreshadowed plenty of times. But because the goal has basically been fulfilled and the other characters being confident that she can fully return to normal with a little work, I'm really wondering what's next. Like, Casca returning to normal didn't end up being emotionally fulfilling, so there kind of has to be a new goal introduced, I feel like. And again, if the new chapters address this, please just ignore me. Now to be clear, this definitely isn't a criticism. I just think it was a really interesting choice that will probably make more sense in hindsight once we get a bit further into the story. I mean, to me, the moment where Casca returns seemed like it wasn't trying to be sad or happy, or really provoke a lot of emotions at all, like other parts of the story has before, because it's a very short and fast-paced sequence. Apart from this really nice panel of Casca hearing Gus's name. But the part where they actually meet, while there are some really nice page spreads, the whole moment lasts only 8 panels and after it's done it just cuts to a different scene. But again, this definitely is not a criticism. In fact, I don't really think I have any criticisms for Berserk. I mean, there is one thing. I think my one criticism for Berserk is that there are too many goddamn titties. Like bro, you gotta lock yourself in a room on the other side of the country to read the story so people don't think you're reading some like furry hentai or something. Other than that, everything was absolutely 10 out of 10. And yeah, that's basically my thoughts on one of the best stories I have ever consumed. Now, if you want to hear my thoughts on not the best story I've ever consumed, but the best anime adaptation I've probably ever seen, make sure to check out this video right here.